Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. This one is going to be a lot of fun if you are somebody who likes to play around with a terminal. We're going to talk about tilde which is a really neat terminal application that you can put on your Linux computer and it doesn't matter what distribution you're running. Tilde is pretty much available in the repositories for every major distribution of Linux. Now this is not the first time I've talked about tilde. We talked about it a few years ago in conjunction with Ubuntu Mate and using it on an Ubuntu desktop as a drop-down terminal. There's an advantage to using Tilde for a drop-down terminal over other applications, let's say like Gwake, because Tilde takes up very little memory. It's only like maybe 5 to 10 kilobytes of memory to run all the time, so it doesn't uh, overload the system and you won't even know that it's there. The idea that I had today was, is I thought it would be fun to have a setup where I had a terminal that was running on my desktop all the time. Because a lot of times I just sit down at the computer and I'll type in one or two commands and then walk away for one reason or the other. And I have to open a terminal. Not that it's a big deal because I just use alternate control and T and Linux Mint and Ubuntu and there it is. It pops right open. So if I want to do that, I get a regular terminal opening. And that's not a problem at all. But I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool just to have a prompt hanging in space that I could do things with? Well, that's what Tilda has allowed me to do. So I'm going to show you how I've got it set up, and then I'm going to show you how to set it up. So the first part of the video is going to be the features, and then the second part of the video is going to be actually installing and setting up Tilda. So here we go. So I have this thing just sitting there, and when the computer boots up, about 10 seconds after it logs in, this prompt just appears hanging up here toward the top of the screen, and it's a terminal. I can work in it just like I would work in any other terminal, and I can even run HTOP in here. And of course, it's only showing me what the CPUs are doing and the memory usage and stuff like that, because uh, when it first boots up, it only shows eight lines, which is fine. No problem there. So let's say that you are using uh, the tilde terminal and you have an application open behind it or maybe it conflicts with your current wallpaper or something like that and you're going, okay, I can't see that. No problem. F12 will turn off the transparency. So now you can see behind it. Well, what if you're working in here and then you say to yourself, okay, now I got to get serious. I mean, it's like you checked on something and now you've actually got to go edit files or do something with it and you really need to put your focus on the terminal. Not a problem. F11 makes it full screen. You can still toggle the transparency to see what's going on behind it on the desktop with F12. And then when you're done, just F11 again and it puts it back in its little transparent window. So that's pretty cool. Now you can hide it altogether using the F1 key. And see, it went away. It's still running, it's just we can't see it. And we can also use F1 in another way. So let's say that we are opening up uh, an application and we can't see it anymore because it's back behind there. To bring it forward, don't use alternate tab because it doesn't show up in alternate tab. It's running in the background and it doesn't show up down here in the panel. It doesn't actually get an icon or a, a little box to show that it's open. So to bring it forward, just tap F1. Now it's sitting there. Oh, we can't see what's going on behind there? No problem. All you got to do is turn off the transparency using F12. And then to make it go away again, you can alternate tab to bring this application forward. If you have to make it show up, no problem. If you click F1 again, that'll just hide it completely. So let's go ahead and close that application and show you it's not there anymore. F1 brings it back. Now, the way this is set up, and this is the default setting, that F1, it does override the desktop's F1 function, which is to open up a help menu. Uh, actually, in Linux Mint, it takes you to a web page that's got all the help on there. I'm assuming that if you're going to be running something like tilde and you would be interested in this that you wouldn't worry about losing the F1 function on your desktop. <laughs> so it's no big deal. You can always just close tilde and then you can open F1 if you have to get to it e either way. So let's talk about the behavior as far as tilde closing is concerned. Typing exit will not close the terminal. What does it do? It logs me out and it logs me right back in. I have it set up to do this so that tilde is consistent. It's not going to go away. If I do accidentally close tilde for some reason, and there's really only one way to do it, and that's a key binding, 
uh, then I can just go to the menu and look for tilde and restart it and it just shows up exactly where it was before. Now I'll show you that key binding in just a second, but I will show you uh, some more features here. If I right click on the prompt or anywhere inside this in window, then I get this menu that pops up and I can open up a new tab. So tilde is a very powerful terminal. It is tabbed and I can have as many tabs open as I like. So if you're somebody who likes to work in tabs, so let's say over here you have in this tab that you're looking at a file uh, or whatever, or you have different, uh, you're logged in through SSH or X2Go or something like that on two different places, then you can accomplish that here. To close tabs, right click and then close tab. There's also a keyboard shortcut there. I don't use tabs very often myself but a lot of people who do use terminals do use tabs quite a bit so there you go when we get down to the last tab if I close tabs again <clears throat> it just logs me out and logs me in now if I actually wanted to close this I mean no really I want tilde you need to go away now then what I would do is just use alternate and F4 which is a standard shortcut to close an application and as long as you're focused on tilde it goes away to get it back go to the menu and we'll type in tilde and now we can get it back. So that's cool. It is also set to start up automatically when the desktop starts. So this is a great little terminal application. And yes, you can set it up as a drop down terminal to replace Quake or XFCE terminal in the drop down mode. Whatever you want to do with it, you go right ahead. There's a lot of different configurations. So that is end part one introduction to tilde. Next part of the video, we are going to actually install Tilda, and we're going to run it in this virtual machine. I'm going to show you how super easy it is to set up. It's like insanely easy to use. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up a regular terminal, and now I am going to issue the command sudo apt install Tilda. You can also find it in your software center or you know whatever however you get packages in your Linux distribution. This is Linux Mint, so we're getting it there. Let, let's install it. It's a very tiny program. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space at all. So now we will install tilde. Okay, and now we can start working with it immediately. All right, so the first thing we need to do is open and configure it. So go to the menu, and it's, it's running a little slow because it's a VM. And we'll find our tilde and we'll open it up. And when it first opens up, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get your configuration page right up front. And then you see tilde is actually this box right here up in the corner. And uh, that's kind of, you know, you're, you're probably sitting there going, eh, you know, what am I going to do with that? Uh, first, you can adjust your font size. I made mine bigger because I like big fonts and 16. And then you can go through here and look at these different uh, settings. Now, a few I want to call your attention to are... Uh, you, you don't want always on top on. Turn that off or it won't. If you're going to use it as a drop down terminal, yes, you want always on top. But if you're going to use it the way I'm going to use it, make sure you turn that off. You can also start it hidden if you like. Uh, let's see here. If you set it as a desktop window, it kind of embeds itself in the desktop. But then I noticed with the cinnamon desktop that I was having a problem with focus. We don't want to show it in taskbar. We don't want a notebook uh, border around it. And you can also have it set up to start in full screen. Display in all workspaces. I left that on. And then what happens, uh, let's see, what here? It's uh, uh, the focus pull-up behavior. So anyway, if you click off of something else, you can have it where it hides if you want it to, or it just loses focus. It's probably better just to have it lose focus. Now here is where you can set this. Um, let's see, where is this? It's in here somewhere, and it's something that I needed to show you. What happens when you closed it? Maybe that is under command. Yes, it is. So if you exit the term right now if you type in exit, you will exit the terminal. So what we want it to do is we want it uh, to just reset the command, restart the command, uh, which means that um, yeah, um, 
it will restart it. I was making sure I was saying the right thing. That's the behavior that we're talking about right there. And let's go to appearance because now we can start to move things around a little bit. So what did I have for a height? I think I set it at around, and you notice you'll see the window growing as we do this. Uh, let's say if we put it about 35 and then I think the width I had on here was well, I was kind of stupid. I can just go check that, can't I? So bring that up. And then we'll look at preferences here. And we'll see what I had set because I kind of want to have it to be the same way. So we've got 25 and 72% for our height and width. So you remember that number, 25 and 72. You can keep that in mind. So we'll put this at 25. And then we've got 72 here, right? That's what we said. Now, we want it to center horizontally, which we'll put it where we want it to be. And we'll go back to appearance, and now we can work on, uh, let's see, we set the transparency. I had that set to 100%. Now we have to turn it on. Just move that up there to 100%. And that's pretty much the same thing. Let's see if we changed anything in key bindings. I don't think so. Yeah, it's that's pretty much standard. That's what we want it to be. Don't have to worry about inc compatibility. Well, we do want to change something in scrolling. I like to have it where it's set for 10,000 lines. Um, that depends on how much memory you want it to suck up. You can do that. And then the scroll bars need to be disabled. So we just use the keys. So I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, I did want to change that font size now, didn't I? So that would be under general. And we'll just make that font a little bit bigger. I don't mind the font type. You can certainly set this any way you like. Select. And that's it. So it's the same, pretty much the same setup, except, yeah, there's one thing that I did, do need to do here. I'm going to move it down from the top just a little bit. So that would be under Appearance. And just move it down just a touch is what we want to do. Okay, right there is how we do that. See, now I'm moving it down just a little bit. Make it like, I don't know, 15% now. I want that prompt to be kind of hanging in midair. Good to go. All right, so that's pretty much the same setup that I had on the other one. Let's jump over there and take a look. We can go ahead and close this here. Yeah. That's pretty much what we got going on. Looks good to me, doesn't it? So now the next thing that we need to do is once we have it all set up and ready to rock and roll and we like what it's doing, make sure all the functions work here. We do F11. You can full screen it. Yep, it's doing exactly what we want it to do. The next thing we want to do is make it so it starts up. Now this is going to change a little bit depending on your desktop, but in Linux Mint, it's super duper easy to do. So just open up your settings right there. And now we want to go to Start Up Applications. And we're doing this for Linux Mint with the Cinnamon desktop. We want to add. We're going to add an application, which means this little window is going to come up. Scroll down until you find tilde. And it's pretty far down on the list there. There it is. Highlight. Add application. Not quite done yet. Let's go in here and let's edit this. So we'll click edit. So we don't have a, script, a description in there. Let's give it one. Call it turda, tilde terminal. Not turda terminal or whatever I was trying to say. Almost sounds nasty, doesn't it? Anyway, we want, to, want it to wait about 10 seconds so most of the desktop gets good and loaded. And we'll save that. And then we can test to make sure that that's working simply by logging out. 
So we'll log out of this VM. And we'll log right back in. And just wait a second to see if it pops up, which it should. Yep, there it is. So that will run like that all the time. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks for watching the video. I certainly do appreciate it. And um, the thing is, is I was just playing with this before I started making this video. So a few of the things got me a little confused. So if I kind of seemed like I was like, huh, there for a little bit, that is why. Because I haven't played with this in quite some time. But it certainly has improved since the last time I looked at it. And I wanted to share it with you. Check out Easy Linux on the web if you would please that page is always changing new things are showing up there check out easy linux on facebook if you're a facebook user give it a like and also check out freedompenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about linux and i have a whole bunch of content that's going to be showing up there uh, that if you missed it the first time around it's going to be there and new videos will appear there uh, as well they also appear on facebook so either place you can figure out uh, you can keep up with what's going on if your youtube subscriptions aren't keeping up because sometimes that can happen and do subscribe to the youtube channel as well i would appreciate that likes and subscriptions uh they make the trolls really mad so if you don't like the trolls just like and subscribe all right gang that's it thanks for watching i appreciate it we will talk again soon